Hi, I'm Siggy Grunberg, and I'm a co-founder and CTO of Lightbits, and I'm also a member of NVM Express. I co-authored the NVMe over TCP transport binding stack, um, and this is what we're going to talk about today, along with its importance to NVMe adoption. So TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol, and it runs over the internet. Um, it provides the ability of to, for two computers to communicate on top of an IP network. Um, and it's a reliable connection transport, which means that you know a sender or one computer is sending a message to a second computer is acknowledged by the receiver such that the sender knows that the mes mes message was received by the other side. And TCP takes care of in order delivery, flow control, retransmissions, and all hides all the complexities. Um, the useful um, um, this is useful for NVMe as a storage protocol because you don't want to happen to lose some of the data uh, that's transferred because of link layer drops, because of stuff like um, uh, congestion. Um, at a high level, TCP is one of the most predominant transports um, in the data center and also um, in the internet. Um, and that's because it's very ubiquitous and approachable. And every service or application that requires uh, reliable data transfer will primarily use TCP. And NVMe over TCP is a transport binding specification and tells us how to transport NVMe commands, data, and completion on top of a TCP network or a TCP transport, should I say. The spec uh, will um, allow implementers uh, to build a solution that's compliant with the specification and able to interoperate with another compliant host or controller, depending on what you're implementing. And um, in the spec, um, the reader can learn about the wire format, about how to negotiate capabilities and attributes, um, error handling, and how to map NVMe queues and TCP connections. With the release of NVMe over TCP transport spec, um, NVM Express really helped industry adoption by removing barriers because it's so ubiquitous. Um, NVMe over fabrics also offers fiber channel transport, but that focused on different market segments and also offered RDMA transport, um, which has some latency benefits, um, but in many cases considered a bit more boutique uh, by, by some people. Um, and TCP IP is part of every, every data center, and thus NVMe over TCP, when it came along, it basically allowed um, you know, existing, it allowed customers to run NVMe over fabrics in their existing infrastructure and also moving forward just by enabling it. From a Lightbit perspective, um, we are focused on cloud and we were obviously early movers on the, on, on the technology. Um, and if it weren't for NVMe over TCP, we probably wouldn't be able to scale our software um, in the uh, cloud environments we focused on uh, to a large number of deployments and devices. The main benefit of NVMe TCP is that it's very ubiquitous and approachable. Uh, TCP is so fundamental to the data center is that uh, for sure it's already running and in a scale and well understood. From there, NVMe over fabric can now be leveraged just by enabling NVMe over TCP with the existing infrastructure also moving forward. Um, and similar how to how the industry uh, compares NVMe as the next generation of, of SCSI, um, people also compare the NVMe over TCP as the next generation of iSCSI and treat it as the successor of iSCSI. Um, NVMe TCP is a, uh, an NVMe transport which that, makes, uh, that means that it inherits a lot of the efficiency that NVMe has and allows it to operate much faster than SCSI. Similar to that, NVMe over TCP is much faster in terms of IOPS latency and throughput compared to iSCSI and other um, TCP-based storage protocols. Prior to the spec reorg, 
Um, I guess it was a little confusing to see both the RDMA transport binding and the TCP transport binding in one monolithic uh, fabrics document. Um, and aside from maybe not uh, being a little confusing about the overall stack and architecture of NVMe with core NVMe, fabrics, transport binding, command sets, um, it also um, was confusing to find specific features that may be specific to TCP, NVMe over TCP, or something that's fabric that cross-functional for fabrics, or maybe core NVMe that back then included also PCIe transport binding. Uh, the rework, um, I think, allows implementers and developers first understand the overall architecture of NVMe and where NVMe over TCP fits as a, as a transport. Um, and also sort of easily find exactly what they need to do and focus on that. Uh, should it be the transport binding um, or, or any other part of the spec after the rework? Um, what it also provides is a way for us uh, to fix, amend, and advance the spec at a different pace that's orthogonal to the rest of the specifications and vice versa. Um, and I expect that moving forward, um, um, this will help us um, advance more efficiently and overall on a faster pace. If you're a developer and you're considering leveraging over NVMe over TCP, as a first step, you should first understand your use case and your environment and try to understand what NVMe over TCP would provide um, um, your specific need and will deliver it. Also, you should survey the landscape of different vendors or services that are available and as well as solutions. Um, in addition, there are many resources online from technical conferences, blogs, technical white papers, um, and YouTube videos uh, that cover anything from high-level use cases to low-level technical information. And I'd also recommend that you visit nvmexpress.org to get more information on NVMe over TCP, as well as overall NVMe. And in there, you can find this specification itself that you can download and go ahead and implement.